What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Merrick's Garage. Today I'm giving you the shop tour. But before we get into that, I did want to hit you guys with some cool news that I've been working on behind the scenes. I have been putting together a, a new video series. It's going to be on this channel. It's going to be coming separate from the Friday videos that you guys are used to seeing. Midweek, shorter format, more Q&A, more product reviews, more how-tos, but shorter, quicker, simpler videos. Basically stuff that doesn't fit into my traditional Friday video. I'm gonna put in a different video format on a Tuesday, Wednesday, I don't know yet. So if you are a subscriber, I would ask that you click that bell notification button down below. What that will do is uh, notify you when I do release a video. And it's unfortunately, it's one of the ways that YouTube keeps track of how we are doing as creators. Is our engagement good with our subscribers? Are we getting good interaction? Uh, all that stuff matters. It's how my channel grows and how I get to continue to bring cool stuff to you guys. So help me help you. For those of you who are here for the first time, I want to say thank you and welcome. And return visitors, you are very important too, and I want to say thank you guys for coming back. I am a square body truck lover. I bought my Blazer in high school uh, a long, long time ago. Daily driver for years, and about five years ago, I started really going to town and building it and changing it and motor swapping, axle swapping, and I've documented all that. And now with the addition of the Suburban I purchased, I'm gonna be doing the same thing. Different slant on that build, but it's all gonna be documented here. So welcome. I hope you guys find this stuff enjoyable and educational and entertaining, or maybe I drive you crazy, but you come here anyway because you're looking to me to fail. I guarantee you I will deliver on that too. But uh, yeah, that's the big news. Uh, Merrick's Garage is up and running. I got the stickers and the hats and the shirts and all that various merch. But enough of me talking about what I got and what I need from you. How about I show you what's in my shop? It's not gonna take long. It's not that big. It's just a two car garage. Let's go. Today is a cool day. I'm gonna give you guys a quick tour around my garage. It's just a two car garage. Um, it looks rather crowded, but I'm gonna show you there is method to my madness here and how I make things work. And uh, yeah, through this garage, I've been able to do a lot of work on my truck that uh, really doesn't need a ton of space to be done, just requires some efficiency, some organization, and a fastidious level of cleanliness. So let's go check it out. So let's just give you a quick tour of what you're looking at so you can see what I'm working with. Uh, obviously, I've got my, my tool chest, which uh, encompasses all my go-tos. I've got my secondary tool chest that I've had for years that has tools that aren't used as frequently. Then I've got my one of my workbenches that's currently occupied as uh, parts storage, and it's got my it's got my two drawer system that's out of the back of the blazer, and along with my fridge, power washer, speakers, various things. Moving down, we get more into the household stuff, and then down here on the floor, you'll see I've got one of my uh, nocturnal welding axle cradles. This thing is going to be very instrumental in uh, getting that axle rebuilt, the 14 bolt full floater in the rear. I've also got this nocturnal welding, welding table. This is probably my most heavily used piece of equipment just because it's where, it's where most of the, the fabrication and heavy stuff happens. Uh, I've got the device on it, got the welding table, it all DCs and turns into another jack stand or axle cradle for me. It's got my railroad rail on it. it. This this thing is awesome. I love it. I've also got this Milwaukee cart, which I bought years ago and have repurposed it as my, essentially my welding and cutting station. Now, what's really nice about this Milwaukee cart is I can keep all of my various parts and things that I need on here. I've got all my lubricants, heat, oils, cutting oils, you name it, is all right there. Cut off wheel with various attachments, wire brush, all various cutting implements and polishing and uh, flap discs that all need to be replaced because they are old and worn out. Let's just take a look at one. Yeah, yeah, I keep on recycling them. I'll put this one away and then when I run out, I'll pull it out again because apparently it's still good. Uh, all the various clamps that I need, uh, extension cords, more fluids underneath, 
moving your way along. Let's actually roll this thing, because that's the nice thing about this. I can uh, move it all very easily. Move the welding table out of the way. Kick my little wheelie cart over there. And here you can see my cutting and welding gases. So I've got oxyacetylene, obviously, and I've got my uh, CO2 argon, which is actually out. I need to go replace that today. That powers my Vulcan welder. This is the Vulcan um, Omnipro 220. If you haven't seen my video on this guy, I suggest going and taking a look at it. I've been very, very, very happy with this guy. It works well. I did have some issues in the beginning. The Tarbor Freight solved for me. So since then, it's been game on. You'll see obviously next to my welder, I keep my fire extinguisher. This. It's critical, just, just have a fire extinguisher. It's kind of a no-brainer. Welding helmet, welding gloves underneath. Let's go take a look at the other side. What do we got over here? I got the new shop vac from Milwaukee hanging on the cart here. This guy is awesome. Quiet, same batteries that all my Milwaukee stuff uses, multiple attachments, and easy, easy, easy dirt disposal. I'm in love with this guy so far. Then right behind me, we're moving over. I've got my drill press and my rag pile. This right here is my 220 outlet. Uh, so I built an extension cord out of uh, just electrical parts to bring me electrical current that I can, this is a 25 foot cord combined with this cord is gonna get me pretty much everywhere I need to be. So I've got my drill press here. Once again, it is also on rollers. Let me move around so you can get a better angle on that. Nothing crazy, it's just a basic drill press I picked up from a buddy of mine for about a hundred bucks, but it gets the job done. The air compressor for making loud noises and compressing air. I really don't use the air compressor that much anymore, just due to the prevalence of uh, the Milwaukee power tools. I mean, even the tire inflator I've got from Milwaukee gets used to uh, inflate some of these tires. Uh, if I do need to get something done quickly, I'm obviously gonna use the air compressor. And the air compressor is used for compressed air to, to clean things off and stuff like that. But I don't run really any power tools off it anymore. I get more torque out of my impact guns than I do out of that compressor. Now, it's not a huge compressor. It's only a 15 gallon compressor, but I've had it for years. It's always worked well. Very reliable. I've only changed out the regulator once or twice. I've only drained it probably three times, but it is getting less and less use. So, okay, finally, uh, moving over, you can see here's the frame. This is the frame that's going underneath the Suburban. Sorry, this is going underneath the Blazer. What this uh, is set up to do is also roam about and be able to move around the shop. If at all possible, everything in my shop is on caster so I can roll it around the floor. I am very, very uh, particular when it comes to cleanliness in my shop. I will vacuum the driveway and the garage pretty much after every day of working. It helps keep the mess down, it helps keep the organization up, and it makes it a more pleasant environment to work in. I really, I can't handle working in dirty shops, they drive me crazy. If you've got a dirty shop and it works for you, right on. I just discovered years ago that, that uh, cleanliness and orderliness uh, really works well for me. So I do a very thorough job every day. Uh, I'll clean all my tools, put them all away, put everything nice and neat, clean, dust, vacuum, you name it. Uh, it adds a lot of extra work, but you know, it helps me keep track of my tools, it helps me keep track of supplies that I'm running low on, it helps me organize and plan for the next day, and it keeps my wife happy, because the reality is, Right over there is our washer and dryer and all our laundry and Christmas supplies and water and extra food and it's a garage. This is a garage that gets used by my kids, it gets used by me for sports and other activities, it gets used by my family for everything. So keeping things clean, keeping things organized is huge. Let me give you guys a quick demonstration of how we can of how we can move everything around here. And there we are, back with uh, a lot more space to work in. That took all of 30 seconds. So put wheels on your stuff when at all possible. Keep your garage floor tidy and clear. 
and enjoy a more efficient way of working on your stuff. I wanted to give you guys a, a good walkthrough of what my workbench has on it, how it works for me, and the basic tools that I use. You're gonna see that obviously the top section is dedicated to the power tool. So I've got my go-tos. I've also got a bunch of small sockets up here that don't get used a lot, uh, but are visible that I can get to. I got my OBD port reader. I've got all my spare keys. I've got my bank of chargers doing their charging work. This camera gear, this, is no BD reader. I'm gonna be getting you guys a video on this soon. This is the new port reader uh, I was sent, and it's pretty bitchin'. Uh, I'm very happy with uh, how this thing works and performs. Now, I do have this guy too. I'm gonna be doing a video on both of these guys as to the differences and features and benefits and why I like this one for diagnostic purposes and why I like this for monitoring purposes. Both of these guys serve a different purpose, but both have a home in my shop. And uh, yeah, we'll give you guys an update on these in another video, but they are very, very cool. Moving down to my top drawer. This, they, they're kind of a mess, but they work. Here is gonna be all my screwdrivers, punches, files, uh, picks. One more drawer down, you've got, I'm gonna have my various uh, fluids, my yellow tape, marking paint, and uh, all my various assorted pliers, electrical, pin, you name it. One more drawer down, we're gonna have protective gear, we're gonna have bits, we're gonna have uh, other bits for the quarter inch drives, sandpaper, hearing protection. Moving down to here, this is my wrench drawer. So I'm gonna have all my, uh, Milwaukee wrenches in here. I've got the full set of standard and metric. I've got the angle drive and my impact set. And this impact set in particular was a killer purchase. I've had this thing for years. It's made by Clutch. Uh, I've only managed to lose one of the sockets you'll notice, but this is a huge tool set for me. It was relatively inexpensive and it has been basically the workhorse for my uh, hand tools. So I've also got the new Milwaukee socket set. There's metric set, um, various attachments, breaker bars, quarter inch drives, three eighths, um, brazing tips. That's this drawer. Moving down, we get to the heavy wrenches. This is gonna include adjustables. It's also gonna include my links and then all my hub sockets and various assortment and backup wrenches and some electrical test stuff that I put in the wrong place. This is the drawer of persuasion. If I can't fix it with the wrenches, I'm gonna fix it with one of these guys. So I've got uh, everything from a heavy sledge, light mallet, soft blow, framing hammer, framing hammer, uh, claw hammer. I've got measuring and balance and levels and and then I've got small parts assortment I make it a habit that whenever I go to a hardware store whenever I pick up you know like a bolt like this I'm gonna buy probably 20 of them um, not because I need 20 but I throw them in the box and then should I ever need something I know I'm gonna have extras and spares so I keep everything in here from from small parts uh, this is an this is a bearing out of a 241, sorry, a 208 transfer case, I believe, or 240. I think this is out of a 241 output bearing. I've got a different, uh, different adapter for a different plug on a 220 welder. Uh, I've got <laughs> valve stems, just in case, shift knobs, AN fittings, shrink wrap tubing, a lot of stuff. Moving one drawer over, this is where I keep a lot of the small electrical parts. Uh, this needs more, I need more space to be honest, but this is what I've got to work with right now. And then this is gonna give me step bits, various grommets, emery paper, Allen sockets. These are the extension Allen sockets that can go on, on a driver. Uh, then I've got various small bits. Yep, and more, more small parts, more small parts. 
Moving up here, I've got my Allens and gloves, and then fluids, cleaning products, stuff of that kind. And then finally, cutoff wheel, cleaning, backup welding mask, backup chargers, backup chargers. I got my uh, Milwaukee rivet gun. Uh, what else? More regulators. And a sawzall. Do not be intimidated by the lack of space. Um, when I did this truck at my first house, when I started on it, I did not have anywhere to work on. I had the side of the street. Literally, I had a dirt patch that was about 20 feet long by about eight feet wide. Parked my truck in it. That's where I did the axle swap, right on the side of the road. Ran extension cords across the residential street. It was a disaster, but there was a will on my part to get this done, and I found a way. So that's what I'm saying to you guys. Stop putting roadblocks in the ways of your success. If you have a small garage, just maximize the space. If you don't have a garage, find a dirt lot to work in. Pick up a set of basic hand tools and just start building your collection.